I'm going to compare the new Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Bolt. But before that, if you are interested in staying up to date with all kinds of electric car related stuff, news, uh, that's pretty exciting lately. It's just that every day there's something exciting. Well, this is the right place to do that. So go ahead and click on the subscribe button so you don't miss anything moving forward. And of course, I would like to mention uh, that I, I really don't think uh, that I ever want to compare either one of these cars to the Model 3, to the Tesla Model 3, because uh, the audience for these cars is very different from the audience of the Tesla Model 3. Also, there are a lot of major differences that just put them in two different classes. You know, it's not a hatchback. Uh, the, 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 the Model 3 has much, much longer range uh, than the, even the Chevy Bolt. Uh, the tech there is amazing. The supercharging network is, is something that always will give Tesla, just always put them in a different class of a car. And of, of course, the pricing as well. So just let's get that out of the way. I think that the Leaf and the Bolt are actually the cars are going to compete for this space where people you know have a budget for their car but they want to get an electric car that has a decent range and actually let's start with the range now the uh the leaf that just came out they announced that it's going to have about 150 miles but the next year they're going to come up with an upgraded version for the range and people are saying it's going to be 200 to 220 miles which is what pretty much the bolt is has right now which is 238 miles. Now, of course, at this point, Bolt wins. As a matter of fact, Bolt has the best range of any manufacturer out there that is not Tesla. So, and, and that's impressive because I actually already had it for almost a year, right? Uh, now, we'll see what Nissan uh, uh, does with, with the upgraded version of Leaf, but for now, it's 150 miles. Now, of course, the second thing we got to talk about is the price, right? Because budget is everything. Uh, now, Leaf has an advantage, of course, because it, the, the range is smaller. It, it starts at 30,000, where the Bolt starts at 37. Uh, it's quite a difference. So Leaf definitely has an advantage if you don't mind the difference in the range, which is almost 80 miles. I'm sure that the price will go up uh, when they come up with a, with a longer range and it's probably going to get closer to the 37,000 that the Bolt has right now. But for this point, if you're comfortable with the Nissan Leaf's new range, the, 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 the Leaf wins as far as pricing is concerned. Um, horsepower, you know, I really don't care that much about horsepower. I think uh, in this class uh, of a car, people don't, but nevertheless, it's 147 for the Leaf and 200 for the Bolt. Again, a uh, bit of a difference, but don't forget, uh, electric cars are known for really awesome torque. And uh, now I personally drove uh, the Bolt. I have not driven the Leaf. I think it's gonna be in two or three weeks, um, but it's, you know, it's pretty impressive for a tiny little electric car. Um, it does have a little bit of a lag for me, though some people say it doesn't have it for them, uh, but you know, the, the, the torque is, is what it's all about. Um, now let's talk about the self-driving features, right? Because this is what electric cars are now, almost people expect them to have it, you know, simply because Tesla has an autopilot. Uh, now, this is where Nissan Leaf obviously is ahead because they have the ProPilot feature, which is, you know, uh, very comparable to what Tesla has as far as keeping the car in the lane, keeping the distance between the cars uh, ahead of you. Um, and they also have this uh, uh, one pedal driving feature as well, where you can literally just drive it with one pedal like a golf cart. Um, I'm not quite sure if that feature is going to catch on, but nevertheless, they have all these features and it's available where the Chevy Bolt doesn't have any of those features, which is kind of surprising because you guys probably hear a lot of news about all this kind of uh, autonomous driving bolts. And it's true, they are testing theirs. As a matter of fact, I have a feeling they're a little bit of ahead of Tesla at this point, but that's not on the market yet. As a matter of fact, we don't even know if they're going to be selling those cars or simply using it for their own uh, Uber-like service. Uh, but for now, Unfortunately, Bolt loses on this one. Uh, space is um, actually also uh, a Leaf has the advantage because it has uh, 23.6 cubic feet versus Bolt's 16.9 cubic feet. Now, this is pretty important because, you know, people buy hatchbacks because, you know, they want to fit stuff in there. As a matter of fact, I like my Model S because it's a hatchback and I can fit, fit my hockey goalie gear, which is, you know, a 
really you know it, it takes a lot of space so um this this is something that a lot of people will probably consider but don't forget when you have that premium sound package that bose amplifier is bolted down to the floor uh still even in this version and that makes it a little bit more uncomfortable to put stuff in there but nevertheless uh, a leaf has the advantage in the cubic feet the inside uh the level two charging is pretty equal uh, Leaf has it at 22 miles per hour uh, versus the Bolt at 25 miles an hour. So Bolt is just a little bit uh, faster. This is where I know a lot of people prefer Bolt and I think a lot of people, I, I'm, I'm and my, I agree actually that Nissan Leaf really kind of screwed up on this one. Even people who really love Nissan Leaf really go like, oh man, I wish you guys would have had it. And I'm talking about active thermal management uh, system which basically means that the way the car cools its battery, which is very important, if you don't, like with an active uh, 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 thermal cooling system, it, it will cool it down to the point where the battery won't degradate as fast. Now, you know, this is basically what it's all coming down to, right? The Nissan Leaf is known for their battery going bad really quickly and, and the range going down really quickly because the battery degradates uh, because it doesn't have it. Um, and unfortunately they still, don't have it in this version of their car where Bolt has it and therefore you should expect uh, re replacing your Leaf's uh, battery way before the Bolt. Of course time will tell and Nissan is saying that the, the way they designed it is much better and doesn't maybe even need the active thermal management but I don't think anyone's buying that. Uh, so this uh, five year 60,000 mile warranty may come in handy though a lot of people reporting that when you know they, they end up arguing with Nissan what it means that the battery have gone bad that the degradation is is to the point where it needs to be replaced and of course Nissan fights them because you know it's a battery replacement it's a lot of money for them um, so there's a gray area there you might want to look it up and and see if this is something you guys are comfortable with before buying the Leaf. Let's talk about the interior now now I've been in both cars and I have to say Nissan Leaf is it's okay you know it's your average compact car interior. I don't think they've updated it that much. Uh, and so it's okay. Now the Bolt one, I'm actually more impressed. I like their uh, heads up display and, and their uh, touch screen uh, on your right. I just, I, I don't know, I just felt like it's more tech friendly. Just, just appeared the interface and everything. So, and the interior is, you know, again, nothing special, but I just liked it better. I have to say that I just, I just liked it better. Um, and um, the navigation system, now the Leaf has it as an optional navigation system. You can add it to your package, but the Bolt has it only through your mobile phone, which actually a lot of people prefer, right? Just, just use your Google, I have to say, I, and I'm embarrassed to admit this, but as a Model S uh, driver, Sometimes my Google Maps directions will give me a better estimated time of arrival because of the traffic, the way it calculates traffic versus what Tesla navigation can do. So this may actually not be that bad of an idea. And of course, uh, the, uh, the, the interiors is, is something, then the tech is something that's pretty important to everybody. Now, if I miss something in this video, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know if uh, it's a concern or something that I should have I should have mentioned here. Because you never know. You know, there's so many people care about so many different things. Maybe you care about the spare uh, tire that's not in the car. So let's discuss it in the comments uh, and kind of keep this video alive and and have the conversation there because I know a lot of people are still asking a lot of questions, especially about the leaf. Uh, well, that's it for me for now. I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.